Now, we know that as a university, a best practice is to have a clear description of those admission progression and graduation policies first. Let's take a look at admission policies. Some of those elements, and these are minimum standards that NLN says should be included, graduation from an approved or accredited program that provides the basic foundation of knowledge that students will need to have in order to build or scaffold the content that they will learn in the nursing program. Second is the minimum GPA. Third is a minimum score on an entry exam. Fourth, the ability to read and write English and whether or not a TOEFL exam is required to validate that knowledge. Fifth is going to include those official transcripts and finally those relevant prerequisites. Now, again, these are minimum standards. NLN does not state or recommend a certain GPA or a minimum score on an entrance exam such as a TEAS or a HESI A2. It's just stating that these are some of the minimum standards that are expected to be and included in admission policy. Students may be referred to their student handbook or an admission policy. Uh, but again, this information should be readily available for students to review. Second, let's go ahead and take a look at the progression policies and what should be included there. First, we should have policies that regulate progression within a program, whatever that specific criteria is. It just needs to be clearly stated in a policy or a handbook that students can easily access. Second, the policy may state that a student must achieve a minimum grade of C. Again, it's not a mandate, but it may be included. Policies that may regulate how many times a student may fail or withdraw from a course should be included, especially as it relates to a student being dismissed from the program. And then finally, decisions should be based on data. OK, so quantitative and not qualitative. And that's just to prevent ambiguity or the perception that there is unfair, unequal treatment um, among students. We should ensure that there is also evaluation of the admission progression and graduation policies and procedures. This is going to help us explore relationships, right, between our policies, our practices, and whether or not it had an impact on patient or I should say student outcomes. Um, when we think about the criteria for these different policies, we want to ensure that it aligns with any missions or goals that the university has, especially as it relates to admissions policies. So for example, if there's a specific recruitment effort to diversify your student population, you wanna look and see, is your marketing uh, message aligned with that? Is there diversity in the literature that's provided related to your program or even in videos that are recorded or any type of ads that are run, uh, just ensuring that the face of the program really looks like the type of student that you are trying to attract. Again, if that's a marketing strategy for your university. We want to ensure that we are exploring our admission criteria and relationships with attrition. Um, are we avoiding unnecessary attrition? We know some of it happens, right, for a number of reasons, but just ensuring that admission policies are aligned with uh, attracting the student that is going to be most successful in our program and keep our attrition rates low. If we take a look at box uh, 27.8, again, in the Billings and Halstead textbook, it's going to give you some great indicators related to the evaluation of these policies and procedures. So again, take a look at those uh, because those are best practices that have been validated in the research related to um, those relationships and, and what should be included in these policies. Graduation. There should be language regarding students being required to successfully meet program student learning outcomes, especially in a nursing program, right? These are some of the strict requirements that are non-negotiable, that they complete all of their coursework with the minimum GPA, that they've met financial obligations. And this is a hot topic for many universities, uh, and that's related to high stakes testing. If there are specific questions or um, content that a student must complete or test in order to uh, graduate and ultimately receive or have a, an authorization to test submitted to the Board of Nursing, that language needs to be included. NLN doesn't stipulate whether or not it should be included or a component of the program, the high-stakes testing. They're just stating that there should be full disclosure and transparency. 
If you take a look at your red book on page 54, that's where you're going to see five important components regarding the high stakes testing area. Again, just ensuring that we are using, utilizing evidence-based practices that are fair to students related to testing practices. All right, so I think those are the key components related to, again, we are taking a look at competency three as it relates to the admission um, and progression as well as graduation policies and practices and how we evaluate those. I am Dr. Sellers Educate. Again, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way you're gonna receive a notification anytime we have an update posted to the site. I hope this content has been helpful. Remember, we are here to support you on your journey. Feel free to reach, us, reach out to us at drsellerseducate at gmail.com. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great one.